Kamara Football Club Supports Association, I'm delighted to welcome a Kelly legend for an interview in this famous 50 year anniversary week of winning the league. David, thank you very much for coming along. Um, what are your best memories of that day on the 24th of April 1965? <coughs> Excuse me. It's funny. Uh David, it's not about football. It was about Wally Waddle running onto the park with their arms flying over his head. Um, I never saw him as excited in my life. He was uh, he was a delight to watch that day <laughs> because he was very very quiet. Well, not quiet man. He was very sober. Uh, oh, that's the wrong word to use. Uh, he was very. Um, not that excitable person, so to fly onto the park uh, and throw his arms around Big Frank was, was superb. Did you do any special preparation before the game? We never uh, prepared for any game other than how, uh, what we usually did. Even playing Real Madrid or, or anything like that. We, we just trained because we were the fittest team uh, because we had Walter and John uh, and uh, we didn't need to we, I think Waddle was wise enough to say the players were talking about because we used to go to Annan Hill David uh, for our lunch and that's where we would, we would sit there for an hour or so and uh, talk about who we were going to play and I think it, 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 it was helpful Good. Um, Hearts seemed to just think they had to turn up and win that game because they were the favourites, weren't they? Well, they had been playing well. Um, that uh, um, I thought they were favourites. I, I, we were, yes, we were second favourites. Uh, um, they were, they were supposed to win, but uh, I think it depended on the team that lifted the, their their game that day and uh, won. Uh, we lifted our game, and two were the fittest side in the league. Yeah. We had Walter McRae uh, as a trainer, and we, I think, uh, if I think about it, we won more games in the last quarter of the second half, yeah, because we were still going, the rest of the team were failing a wee bit. Yeah. It was a full house at Town Castle that day. Oh, it was. Changed days at Rugby Park nowadays, but what was yeah. it like to play in front of a full house? Oh, it was, it was brilliant. I mean, the noise was superb. Um, I'm not being big header in, but when you're playing, David, um, you don't know it's a crowd. Your concentration is on the game. You're, you're, you're fully concentrated on the game. So. Um, Oh, it's nice to play to a full, uh, full uh, audience. Uh, mm. It was, it was lovely that day. What do you remember about the goal that you scored? Um, no, no, I can already. It was the last part. Uh, we, we Tommy got a ball and he went up the wing, and I ran to the, the back post, and he, he was a great crosser of the ball, David, and he, he said, he put it on my head. I could. Uh, I couldn't do anything but score. Although I just got it in because um, Crookshanks, by the time it hit the back of the net, Crookshanks was past the post. Uh, it was uh, it was a very tight thing, but it was a great ball for Tommy. I've been very disappointed with the match. <laughs> Absolutely. What did Waddle say about you being in the six yard box? <laughs> uh, you want me to quote you? No, that's okay. <laughs> um, Scored the goal yet he don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian McElroy scored the second goal. Mm -hmm. um, he was a good player because you and him worked that left flank. He was the best player I ever played with who would indicate by his motions of his body where he was going to go. And luckily, <laughs> I'm no bummer, I didn't need a bad left foot. And if he wanted it there, I could put it there. And I think if you if you've seen uh, the, the 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 films uh, of our thing, it's him scoring. Number of times he ran from the back post and headed the ball at near post. Yeah. Uh, I would. 
I don't like to be boasting, but I could put it where I wanted it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it was 34 goals in one year or something. Yeah, a lot of people fail to, to remember that there were runners up four times in the five seasons previous to that. Yeah. Worst, worst war were a fifth in about five or six seasons. Yeah. Um, there were no delight coming to Rugby Park. And I keep saying it, we had Walter McRae, yeah. who was the greatest trainer. Didn't he? Didn't he like him to be the trainer? He was, he was a hard man, but uh, uh, I always remember, you know, you'd maybe uh, coming back for or something, you say, six sprints. You do six sprints. Do another one. What? Do another one. So you do another one. You say, do another one. <laughs> no. And uh, it was. <laughs> the tough, tough. <laughs> See, but uh, yes, you, you, if you did it, he would say, "Don't you could do it," yeah. and it's all in your mind. Do you think the players nowadays are as fit as what you guys were? I don't think so. Um, it's hard to say, David. Um, there's there's fitness and stamina, and I think Carmela had stamina plus fit. Mm -hmm. How do you think today's team at Rugby Park, you know, the, the team that um, Gary Watts got today, how do you think they would fare against the likes of you, uh, your team from 65? Um, the thing about our team, David, we had so many players who were just players. There was not, we Tommy became a great player, but the rest of us just played at a great level and the fitness level was great too and we were lucky um, the, f the defence was solid and um, the forward line I mean as I said we Tommy was a great was the best crosser the ball I ever saw Big Jackie Big Jackie could fall over it once and then beat five men and put it in the net you know um, and we Bertie was the best um, hider of ball I, I played with Myself, I was a working horse, and McElroy, 34 goals, David. Yeah. Unbelievable. For an outside left. Yeah. But his timing was superb. I remember he scored from corner kicks from Tommy and <laughs> myself. Um, it was phenomenal. Yeah. I think there was a good team spirit in those days because, if I remember correctly, the players all used to go on holiday together. Yeah, the other thing, we, and we, we, we would have. We wouldn't go out and party. I mean, we would would have parties in uh, our own houses, you know. I mean, Compass Bar and Big Frank Beatty's uh, V Village was uh, notorious for a, a, a party. I mean, uh, it's not about football, but you used to go up there and you say you didn't know where you were sleeping that night. Oh, your room is so and so, and your room is. I mean, I mean, there would be twenty or thirty of us, and. Uh, it, it was a wee village and everybody knew everybody else and and it was lovely to go to. Big Frank was a great player, wasn't he? Yes. Nobody played well again. He just played. He was the most, I'm not being unkind, he wasn't the most, uh, shall we say, he just played David. Mm -hmm. Nobody played well against him. He did his job. Yeah. And. Uh, I was uh, fortunate to have him behind me because um, he gave me a lot of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, he would win the ball and uh, would say, here you are we man, you take it. And I would uh, go on from there. And of course behind the centre half, the two of the best goalkeepers in Scotland at the time, yeah. Campbell for I think Scythe they both played for Scotland, David, didn't they? Yeah. Um, Campbell was, he was a terrific goalkeeper. Big man, a big man some size of Ali. And Bobby Ferguson was the fastest thing you ever saw. I mean, uh, to, to, to compare them, no, they were both the same. They were both the same level to me. Yeah. Well, it proved that they were both scoring keepers, weren't they? Absolutely. What was it like in the dressing room after the final whistle at Tyne Castle? Um, oh, it was unbelievable. I, I always remember the, the directors coming down and all they were uh, over the men. And uh, as I say, we were we were delighted, and the deal uh, he was 
he was on the garbage head, you know. Um, it was. Uh, it's hard to describe because you've got to be in the situation uh, to to know to what it felt like. Yeah. Um, sure. That uh, everybody was. Oh, nobody. Uh, nobody played badly that day. We all played well, and I think that was the the good thing about Coman and one of the the assets we had. Everybody played. And but as I say, we had Walter who did win the fittest team. Yeah. Um, uh, but we was, were going, we won more games in the last quarter of the second half. Yeah. And there was also players that didn't play that day, the likes of Ronnie Hamilton, uh -huh. Jim McFadden, uh -huh. Stuart Leyburn, um, lots of players that could have come into team. Oh, they could, have, they could have walked into the team. They would have walked into any other team. Mm -hmm. um, they were, <laughs> I don't want to say we're unlucky, they were. We, we didn't have many injuries that year, and as I say, we were fit. And I think fitness has a lot to do with recovering from injury. You know, a, a wee injury, uh, it, uh, we, can, we can look back and say, we didn't like Walter, but he did as a turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he made us, he made, we won more games in the last quarter of the second half. We're still going when, when, uh, when they were a wee bit down. And the bus journey home would be? Quite nice. <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, the directors were were very un, uh, unbelievable. And so was the world. Uh, and what happened when you got to Comano? Well, we stopped at the top of the town, mm -hmm. and the police met us, and they said, uh, "Right, we'll take you and escort down." And uh, that was lovely. It was great for Comano. Uh, I can always remember. A works manager saying to me, he says, I can tell on a Monday morning how the team's done. I says, how do I? He says, if the one everybody's uh, working, talking to each other and working away and, 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 and being uh, up there, and uh, if they get beat, it's, oh no. Mm. Oh, I think we were sad. Uh, well, no, sad there. Uh, and you nearly never get into Rugby Park after the game because you had to go and get my mum. Uh, well, I, we lived about uh, 300 yards, 400 yards from the park. And uh, I said to the boss, let me off, I'll go and get my wife and walk them over. <laughs> so I went up the stairs and there's two old ladies watching, David and Kate, my, my son and daughter. And uh, I said, where's Lena? She's over at the park. I said, oh my God. So. I ran from there, which is about, what, five, six hundred yards. Um, I, I ran from there over at the park. And I got to the gates and this boy said, Name to get in, son. I said, you know, you know, care me. Oh, it's you, David. No, you go. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the, it was just the, 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 the town went daft. It, it's amazing how a team can affect a, 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 a a town, especially the works, as I say, I think I said before, a works manager could tell me how they'd done on a Monday afternoon. Yeah. You're still wearing the strip today that you wore on the 24th of April 1965. Still yeah. fits you. And my birthday. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it still fits you. It does, aye. I'm be four pounds overweight. Is that all you are now, is it? Aye. Um, so you're looking forward to Friday night, there's a big dinner over at the Park Hotel celebrating the the anniversary, you look forward to that? I am, I am. I think it's lovely for the punters, you know, to celebrate, say, we did this. And <laughs> I've not been, I'm not been bombing, but I love to say, well, we did it. I, I, I was proud to be a member of the team. And I, was proud, I was proud of the supporters um, that came uh, and watched us all that time. Um, but, um, no, I hope it happens again. Don't know about that. Well. Thank you very much for talking to us today. I appreciate that. And uh, enjoy yourself on Friday night. Thank you.